What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. So today we're going to be talking about uh, actually the stuff that went live on news today. I was reporting about the Support Sugo Fest. Uh, luckily we have the data download right now so we can actually have a look at what this Sugo Fest is actually going to look like in game. So here we go. This is the Support Sugo Fest that is going to be arriving December 5th. So it's going to be arriving literally tomorrow as of me you know, uploading this video uh, when the uh, Sabo and Koala Sugo Fest does leave, this will be the one that's going to be replacing it. Now, there's there's actually two different parts of this Sugo Fest. So you've got this one right here, and you also have this one right here. Now, first and foremost, I, I do have to say, for support Sugo Fest, most players, if not all players, should definitely avoid these Sugo Fests because, I mean, hey, look, pu pulling for the support units isn't really what you should be going for. You should be pulling for the high tier rare recruits. And then the high tier legends, obviously, when it's a two times legend rate. Uh, because it is a support Sugo Fest, obviously, you should probably stay away from this particular banner. Um, especially if you are a player that, do, that does like to spend money on this game, because Treasure Map Sugo Fest literally is right around the corner. Um, the, the units for the Treasure Map Sugo Fest have actually already been added to the game, but the Sugo Fest is not in the game yet, which is a little odd. So expect another data download within the next couple of days, I would assume, at this point. Um, so I'm really looking forward to when they actually announce the Treasure Map Luchi stuff, because then I'll be able to upload a video for you guys giving you guys preparation for that treasure map and uh, let me tell you it's not going to be fun but i digress let's talk about this sugo fest uh because it is very interesting i will admit uh because on that banner right there that new sengoku that is global first that is arriving on the english and french and korean version first before even arriving on japan which is pretty cool i do like that they are giving us more global first stuff it's just a support unit though like people aren't going to be spending their gems on a support unit considering we already know what's coming we already know that bullet stampede luffy kaido are on the horizon and we know that they are extremely powerful no one's going to be pulling on this banner and if you do well let's talk about this sugo fest so uh, this Sugo Fest, obviously, new support character is going to arrive with Sengoku, English, French, Korean versions. Obviously, going to be appearing first. We will be talking about the Sengoku because I think he is going to be very, very good. Despite what I've been saying about support Sugo Fests, this Sengoku is pretty freaking good. And we'll talk about why he is so good. Um, the support Sugo Fest, all wanted posters are guaranteed to be four star or better. Stock standard at this point. Characters with support effects will be recruited with their support effects at level 1. I don't like this. If they want people to pull on the support Sugo Fests, it, you got to make it level 5. If it's level 5, people might be tempted to pull here. Because the thing is, people don't really want to farm for the support medals. But if a unit already comes with max support, that's a pretty big incentive. So I'd say that's the first step to getting people to pull on these banners. Is to apply level 5 support to these units. Uh, Sugo Fest exclusive characters will be recruited in their pre-evolution forms without support effect. Of course, that makes a lot of sense, unfortunately. I mean, this would be a good Sugo Fest to introduce... Um, six star pullable legends like only on the support banners though That would make a lot of sense because if you do pull a legend and it does have a support ability It would come at level five that would honestly be pretty good in my personal opinion But you're not pulling on these banners for the legends. You're pulling for the support units, obviously uh, plus, past support rare recruit characters will also be available. We'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Uh, it's going to be split into two parts. We already talked about as well. Part one from the 5th to the 8th, then from the 8th to the 12th, and then from the 12th until the 15th, both parts will be available. Again, you should really steer clear away from the tavern throughout this period. On December 12th to 15th, part one and two will be there. Obviously, we've already shown that. Temple Swan rare recruit counter will reset when transitioning between parts. Whatever. Anyway, let's get into the nitty gritty. So, the first multi pull on part one or part two, no matter what, is going to be 30 rainbow gems. So, the discount is nice. We don't know what the rates of these support characters are going to be. If the rates are actually half decent, I think a lot of people who do spend money on the game might be incentivized to be pulling here because some of these support units, they've proven to be quite useful. Um, specifically, I think this Sengoku is going to be very good. The Kyoshiro is really, really good. Um, uh, who else is really good? We've got the uh, the Peckhams or the Nazams, whatever his name is. He is very, very good as well. So all of these characters are going to be available here. I still don't think it's about, it's worth pulling. But anyways, the second and fourth multi on these banners, last wanted poster is guaranteed to be a rate boosted character. That can be any character on the tavern or anyone who is a rate boosted rare recruit. The actual information post on the news board does list all the boosted rare recruits. So unfortunately, the chances of you getting a support unit on that 11th poster isn't really that high. 
Uh, I think that if they, again, wanted to incentivize people to be pulling here, if the second and fourth multi was a guaranteed support unit, people would definitely be pulling for this. The third, sixth, and eighth is a guaranteed legend. Obviously, people are not pulling for legends on these banners. Like, it's an extra bonus because if you want to pull for the legends, you pull on, you know, specific Sugos. This is not a Sugo to pull for legends, of course. The fifth and seventh multi, limited pull support character exclusive. Okay, well, there you go. If no one's doing five multis for a guaranteed support character. That's trash. And the tenth multi is a limited pull legend. Okay. Um, so, here's your limited pull legends for part one. So, on boosted for part one, you got Luffy Law, Rowan Orozoro V2, but so Cavendish, Dex Sabo, Cracker, Monkey D, Garp. Dude, I've been saying this. Garp is always boosted. Stop boosting Garp. <laughs> no one, no one really cares about Garp that much. Like, if he's one of the only legends that you're missing or something, like, obviously, that's, that's nice, I guess. But, man, <laughs> Garp just seems to be boosted all the time. I hate it, man. I hate it. Now, part two. You've got Sabo and Koala, which is weird because the banner just showed... Zeus and Prometheus, but Sabo and Koala are like the top listed legend that's boosted. I don't know how I feel about that. That's kind of whack. I don't know. I feel like Sabo and Koala should have just been on the banner. Then you got Zeus, Prometheus, and Big Mom. You've also got Charlotte Katakuri V2. Crack, uh, not Cracker, Carrot, my bad. You also have V2 Sanji and Frankie. So a lot of the more recent legends aren't even boosted. Like, where's Sanji and Judge? He's not on this banner. Legend Jack isn't on this banner. Like, a lot of the more recent ones are not on here. The, the list of legends is good, but, you know, I feel like some of those units probably should have been put on this banner anyway. Um, so, that's pretty much it for those boosted legends. Obviously, you've got a bunch of those support characters that are going to be available as well. Koshiro, Sengoku, Olumbus, Suru. Uh, Olumbus is okay. Suru, I don't remember what she does. I don't think she's that useful. Uh, and then on part two, you've got boosted Strusen, who's trash. Mistems is good. Charlotte Oven, I don't remember. And Iceberg, I don't remember what he does either. So, let's talk about this Sengoku character and why he is so interesting. So, this this Sengoku is a Psy Cerebral Free Spirit. Now, his captain ability and special ability don't matter that much. Obviously, he's a support unit. That's the main draw to the character. But I just want to state it, of course, his captain ability is a 1.75 attack and recovery boost to Cerebral. Not that good. Special ability, 13 turns, reduces damage taken by 70% for one turn, and boosts your crew slot effects for one turn. Because it says just boost your crew slot effects, I would assume that it's a 1.5 orb boost. So, I mean, that's a very old school type of special, so not really that good. But let's talk about his support ability. So his support ability only attaches to Trafalgar Law, which is very big for what he does. So at level 5, once per quest, if the supported character uses a damage dealing or HP reducing special, changes all slots to supported character's current slot and boosts your chain multiplier by 0.7 for one turn. So initially when I first read this, it didn't even compute that uh, there were some certain characters that could abuse this. Um, but this is pretty interesting. So whatever slot the law has when you use his special, everyone gets the same orb. So there are a couple of different instances where you could use this. Number one would be for a character like Trafalgar Law being the, uh, the treasure map, the treasure map Trafalgar Law. He has a special ability where he does damage, so this will proc, and also uh, he changes his own orb and adjacent orbs to matching, I believe. So in this situation, you could get a full board of strength orbs for your team. Not too shabby. Uh, remember, he does add a chain boost, but tre treasure map law also applies a chain boost, so it's a bit iffy. But the main component where you would be wanting to use this is obviously with Luffy and Law. The reason for that is, is with their switch effect. When you switch between Luffy and Law, the character gets a matching slot. The really cool thing is, is that no matter which one they switch to, either Dex or Quick, when you proc that special ability, all of your crew's slots will be either Dex or Quick. And with their special ability, they treat Dex and Quick beneficial to your entire team. So, when you activate the special ability of Luffy and Law with Sengoku attached, all of your slots are converted to matching, essentially, because they treat those orbs as beneficial. You get the orb boost from Luffy and Law. You also get the damage from Luffy and Law. And you also get the chain boost from Sengoku. And this is really big because Luffy and Law, I would say, they, they do kind of struggle to get matching slots. Now, with a 4.5 times multiplier, not every character on your crew needs a matching slot. I can agree there. But having a character that can just support and get you a guaranteed full board of orbs is pretty freaking awesome. Now... Another reason why this is so good is because support abilities do not activate enemy special interrupts. So if there is a special interrupt that will proc upon switching your crew's orbs, 
This won't do that. And you just get a guaranteed full board of orbs. This character is going to be so good for Luffy and Law. But literally, that's it. I mean, I, I did say treasure map lore as well, which is okay, but... Dude, this on Luffy and Law is kind of busted. Uh, this is a very, very good support ability. Now, I think he's very good. Do I think it's still worth pulling on a support Sugo Fest? Probably not, because the chances to get this guy likely are not going to be good. Because remember, support characters do not have unevolved versions. So you're only pulling for a 5-star unit, and we all know how hard it is to get those V2 Germa characters. So the chances are not that high. Now, the other character, Koshiro, is very, very good. I talked about him previously when he first got revealed on Global, but his supportability is absurd. Only attaching to Zoro, he reduces, uh, what is it? Uh, reduces all uh, enemies' defense up, which is the blue shield, and resilience by four turns, and also applies a chain boost. Again, really, really good for Raid Zoro, who already reduces damage threshold and rainbow shield percent damage reduction. So with, those, with this on top, you reduce those two already, plus blue shield and resilience, as well as a chain boost and then obviously raid zora also applies color affinity as well like it's crazy this this uh koshiro is kind of crazy uh, so i mean the, these two units uh being koshiro and uh and, and sengoku they're very powerful and i think uh if you do get them obviously it makes you know v2 zora raid zora so much better and then this sengoku also helps out luffy and law a lot so you can get around um certain special effects from the enemy but again, it's on a support Sugo, so it is what it is. But also, we have some more added stuff that came with this data download, which was the introduction of a brand new Fortnite dungeon. Well, I, I say it's a Fortnite. Technically, at this point, they're not even Fortnite dungeons, right? Because they're only here for like... Well, well, this, well actually, this one does say it's about two weeks. So that's kind of weird. But, um, you know, usually these Fortnite dungeons are here for like a month. So you can't even call them that anymore. What do we call them? Adventures? I don't know. Anyway, this uh, this specific island is for young Doflamingo, Corazon, and his dad, which is uh, Don Quixote Homing, I think it is. So as for the brand new Fortnite Dofi, he reduces one enemy's HP by 10%. He will boost his own attack and orbs by 1.5 for three turns and changes your crew's side tandem and bomb to strength. Not that good he is not that good the orb the orb mani manipulation is actually very good outside of that though i mean giving himself his own attack and orb boost is kind of annoying i feel like what would have been better is if like is he driven he is driven it would have been better if it was like you know if your if your captain's driven boost driven characters attack and orbs by 1.5 i think that'd be kind of broken for a fortnite unit but still pretty decent overall corazon unfortunately we can't see what he does i don't remember if he did anything decent uh homing heals by 3,000 and halves damage taken for, for one turn he is not that good. But have a look at these uh, books that you have available here. You've got Old School Side Trafalgar Law. Make sure to max his skill. I mean, max all these character skills, honestly. Bartu Cavendish and Legend Cracker skill books are also available here. Strength Marker is very good. Kobe, not so much. Brand new is very, very powerful still. Strength, Limited Rare Recruit Judge. You got Quick Pedro. You got a Bobbin. You got um, the Film Gold Batch. You got some really good characters here. And make sure to max these characters out because you never know when you're going to need them. So make sure to go ahead and do that. But other than that, that's all the information that we have right now. As I said, we should be getting the Treasure Map Sugo Fest within the next couple of days, data downloaded into the game. And when we do, I'll be making another, another video about that. But hopefully you guys enjoyed your time here. If you guys did, make sure to hit the like button. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But other than that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.